Greetings internet and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this cute little corner of my apartment. Honestly, this is probably the most together corner of my apartment thus far. So it has become our new filming spot for Q and A's and life updates and all of the random sit down videos that I tend to do every few months. It's so funny because back in the day, I used to do exclusively sit down videos. Like I'd prop up my camera on my tripod every single time I filmed. And now I've kind of gotten to the point where I do mostly vlogs and I just prop my camera on everything and anything that I can prop my camera on. But it feels good to be sitting in front of a tripod. The camera is just there, we're good. I'm in frame, I'm focused. And I'm just going to let my mind wander, talk to you guys. And honestly, I feel like this video is going to be very reassuring for a lot of people because I intend to answer a bunch of questions you guys asked over on Instagram that have to do with a lot of things that I'm insecure about, but I feel is important to talk about because that is how one, I grow, and two, other people realize that they're not so alone in this world. So that is what we're doing today. It's gonna be a fun one, but I have all my questions typed out on my trusty new Dell laptop. This video is sponsored by Dell and they sent me this gorgeous new laptop for me to try out. And guys, I have never met a laptop that is more me in my entire life. This laptop is the most aesthetic thing I've ever laid my eyes on. She is a beaut. I already loaded on my Patreon wallpaper for June. As you guys might know, I design these wallpapers for desktop, phone, and tablet every single month. I love having something fun to look forward to at the start of each month, so I've been making these wallpapers for almost two years now. The time has flown, but I love how this one looks on my beautiful, stunning, gorgeous new Dell XPS 13 Plus laptop. It is so sleek and minimal. It's just all the essentials so sleek and modern. You can't even see the touch pad, it just kind of blends in. Fits in all of my tote bags. I can bring this around to coffee shops if I wanna work somewhere else and not in my apartment. And it's so light, I'm not gonna break my back carrying this around Manhattan. And I swear, this thing is just lightning in terms of how fast it works. The speed is great. I love that it's also a touch screen. So when it comes to my design work especially, I literally can just like reach out and touch the display in order to manipulate things. If you're a freelancer, if you are in school, this would be so amazing to have. Definitely check out the Dell XPS 13 Plus. I am such a fan. I'm gonna be using it to read all the questions for this video today. So thank you to Dell for sponsoring this video and for introducing me to my gorgeous new friend here. Okay, let's answer some questions. All right, the first question is, now that there are more influencers than ever before, do you feel pressure to stay relevant. Wow, I have so many thoughts on this. Okay, I've been doing this thing, this shindig, this YouTube thing since I was 14 in 2009. That is when I started. I can really only speak for those of us who started back when I did, but I don't think any of us thought that it would get to where it is now. Like it would be this career and this, this thing where there's a word to describe us, influencer. Like I didn't hear that word until like a few years ago, you know, it wasn't really a thing. I remember introducing myself. I'd say, hi, I'm Katie, I'm a content creator. I'm like a YouTuber. And now it's like YouTuber has turned into Instagram or YouTuber, TikToker, like what do you call it? Oh, influencer. That's like kind of what encompasses all these things. But back when I first started, I didn't even have Instagram. It was just YouTube. I didn't even have a phone, guys. Like when I started my YouTube channel, I didn't even have a cell phone. I don't think I got a phone until I was at least like 16. I don't think my parents trusted me with a phone. So things are just different now. Like now there are more of us, there are more creators to look at and to compare yourself to. And it's also my job now. So the way I see things is naturally going to be different or see this industry is going to be different because when I first started out, I was just like a cute little baby child making fun eyeshadow videos on the internet. and. I don't know what gave me the audacity, the, the courage to be like, I am an expert on these things, let me show you. But it was funny because back then you could do that. You could be like, hey guys, here's my makeup routine, blah, 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 and like post the most horrendous makeup video on the face of the planet and not get any hate for it. And just people were happy for you that you're putting yourself out there. And now, fast forward to today, you could post a video on TikTok and people are not shy to call you out and to be just downright cruel. So there is such a different pressure now. I feel pressure to be perfect 
all the time with things and I worry that if I put up like a video and it flops, like if I put up a video and it absolutely flops, like it really affects me. It sits in like the pit of my stomach, this just like the feeling of like, wow, I am a failure. I'm washed up. Like honestly, it's kind of a similar sensation to when you're a senior in either high school or college and you look at like the new freshman coming in and you're like, wow, whoa, did you guys just see that? My light just came on. Is this a sign from like the heavens? Like where did that just come? I have no idea how that just happened. My light just turned on over here. What does that mean guys? What does that mean? Back to what I was saying, it is kind of one of those things where you kind of equate the new people, the new kids on the block. There's always gonna be someone new that's breaking in and that, you know, is getting popular and is the one to watch. And when you see those people like emerge after doing it for a long time, obviously you feel a little sense of like, wow, I am washed up. It's not even that I like hate those people because obviously any success in this industry is a success for us all. Like it's one of those things where you really can't be jealous or you can, I mean, obviously it's a natural reaction to certain things, but I think you should be happy and celebrate everyone. Their success is not my failure. It really is a success for the whole industry. But to answer the question about feeling the pressure, like do I feel pressure? It feels eerily similar to high school. And I don't know if you guys know this, I've talked about it a few times here and there, but not much recently about how I was bullied in high school for making these videos, for doing what I love. I wasn't invited to things. I would fully see my friends like going to things and I wasn't invited. People wrote things on the bathroom wall. People morphed my username into something that was inappropriate. It was just a really tough time for me in high school. And so fast forward to now with the influencer culture, I'm feeling some similar feelings to what I experienced in high school because there are so many of us now because a lot of it is concentrated here in New York, the influencer world. Of course, I get the sinking feeling in my stomach like, oh, I'm not popular, I wasn't invited all the freaking time. Like there are so many trips that happen, there are so many even just like events in the city where I know it truly is not possible for everyone to be invited to everything, but it's one of those things where there tends to be cliques that kind of form based on who is invited to a lot of things and which kinds of brands recognize them and know them. And it does feel like, even though this is like the most pretentious thing for me to say, I don't even know if it's pretentious, but just like, it sounds funny to say. It, it is a slap in the face when you're just not invited. You're not recognized or like some people get this PR package from a brand that you have like personally promoted for so much of your life and then you don't get it. Like it feels like a personal blow when it really isn't, it really is not. But I will just tell you how it feels. It, it stings. A lot of us are friends. Like a lot of us have these genuine friendships, but some people you meet and you're like, is this really, are, are you real? Or is this an act? Are you acting right now? Like what's going on? Are we actually friends? It's strange because we're all being recognized and paid for being relatable, but are we even relatable anymore? It's it's such a weird industry. I'm still trying to wrap my head around, but to answer the question, I know this has been like so freaking long-winded. I do feel pressure all the time. I feel like it's taking me right back to high school with the popularity contests and the clicks and certain people are deemed cool and no one knows why, or like this other person that works triply as hard, doesn't get the recognition. And it's just like, there's no real rhyme or reason to this. And that's why it's so, it's like, a, it's like, gambling posting tiktoks even when you have half a million followers or more like you genuinely don't even know how the tiktoks are gonna do you have to hold your breath every time you post something once you get popular it's it's not even getting there that is so hard it's like staying there and it's just one of those things where i'm like i didn't start this to be focusing on these things like i didn't start my youtube channel to be so obsessed with these sorts of things like i did it to, to have fun and to make friends when I didn't feel like I had many friends in real life and this became real life. And now here I am and I struggle with how I feel about it every single day. I'm just trying to like maintain my normalcy and remind myself why I started and realize that I am helping a lot of people by doing this and it is a fun job. It's fun. I am so grateful that people still care and that I still care, honestly. So I'm just gonna stick with it, but I would be lying if I did say that there is no 
pressure. I feel the pressure every single day. And I just have to remind myself, like, you're doing great, sweetie. It's gonna be okay. Like, as long as you still act authentically and create what you wanna create and make sure it's from the heart, like, you'll be a-okay. Anyway, that was a long-winded answer to that question, but uh, thank you for asking it. It was very good to talk about that. It also has face recognition, the laptop, and it's so cute. My bestie. Okay, the next question is romantic, of course. There's always one but this is a good one to answer. When was your last relationship and how long did it last? And then I just lumped in another question that was also asked that's very similar. Why do you think you're still single? Uh, let's talk about it. Okay, so for so long, this fact tortured me and made me feel so insignificant and so worthless and so ugly and less than and all of those things like wrapped into one, being asked this question and having to answer it. But today I'm 27 years old and I have never had a serious relationship. I have never had someone say, will you be my girlfriend? Or whatever that conversation even looks like. I would never know what it's like or if you just wake up one day and you decided it, I don't even know. I have never personally been in a relationship, even though I've talked about it for the last, who even knows how long, how many years. I was just talking to a friend about this last night. If I knew at age 17, that for the next decade, I would be single, but I'd go on like thousands of dates and go to date parties in college and have crushes and talk to people and go on the dating apps and like all that for 10 years and have nothing come of it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, she would not be very happy with me, would she? She would not be happy. But it's not for a lack of trying. I think it's just one of those things where I'm not even gonna like try to delve too deep into the why, like why are you still single? What a question. What a question, everyone. Um, I, I really think it boils down to, it just hasn't been the right person, right time for me. I just haven't, I haven't met, not even the one, because I've dated people, okay? I've gone on dates. I've gone on dates that have like led to seven dates, okay? And eight dates and nine and 10. And I've had like long-term like situationships, okay? I'm not even saying this to validate myself or to make myself sound cooler. I'm genuinely saying this because I really do think being in a relationship is a special thing that I, I have tried for, but it just hasn't been the right person. And I refuse to listen to the people that tell me to lower my standards because my standards aren't even that high. I trust a feeling more than anything else, okay? There's all this stuff on paper that is important to people. And I, granted, I have a lot of those things as well, like things that are really non-negotiables that are important to me. Maybe it's not like the longest list ever, but the, the number one thing that I really is a non-negotiable is the way that I feel around them. If I feel comfortable around them, I want to date them. Like, it's really that simple. Like, there are other things that are obviously involved, but like comfort is the number one. That's the first thing that I need. I want to feel comfortable with someone. I don't want to feel like I'm second guessing and I'm questioning if they even like me or if they even want to talk to me or like anything like that. I don't want to have those questions in my mind because I am a busy girl who does a lot of great things and I don't want, while I'm doing those great things, to have, oh my God, does he like me in the back of my head? That is just such a waste of of my, of my thoughts, you know? And I don't know, it's just where I am at 27, how I'm feeling. I go on a lot of dates, as you guys know, if you listen to my podcast where I talk all about that. It's not for lack of trying. I want to meet someone where I feel comfortable. I feel that just like, fluttery feeling and I know it doesn't always happen on the first date. I know that and I've had that a little glimmer of that feeling like a little little taste of that feeling with certain people and so I know it's possible I know it is but either those people have ghosted me disappointed me I don't want to justify the fact that I'm picky I don't want to with you guys because I know there's so many of you who are watching this who are just like nodding their heads with me thinking wow I'm like that too or I was like that and it's something where I don't want to settle. And I've met some lovely people that just aren't right for me. I know it. It's almost just like an allergy, okay? Like it just doesn't sit right with me, like a gluten intolerance or something. I, I don't know why I'm comparing dating to a gluten intolerance, but here I am. It's like just certain foods, you're like, ooh, that doesn't sit right. It doesn't sit right no matter how many times I eat it, it doesn't sit right. And I just can't, I, I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. It's like I, when I go out with the wrong person over and over again, knowing that they're not the right person for me, it's like subjecting myself to a gluten intolerance. Like I'm eating gluten when I'm allergic to it. It's just, it doesn't sit right. And I want someone who sits right. Like I want someone where like my body doesn't literally reject them. Like <laughs> in terms of that, the allergy or 
I've had certain people recently that I really thought, I'm like, okay, this could be the one, this could be the one. And then just like certain things, my, my body literally rejects them. Like every time I'm around them, I have a headache. The body knows and you have to trust your gut, okay? Trust the way you feel around them. And I haven't felt this like ease or comfort with someone even after like six dates with them yet. And I'm not going to beat myself up for that because one day guys, one day you'll be tuning into a video of mine and I'll be saying, guys, I found him, I found him. And how great will that feel? I guess like maybe you guys will be happy for me, but for me, I mean for me, how great will that feel knowing like, wow, I'm glad that I, I waited, you know? And that doesn't mean I haven't experienced life. I've gotten out there, I've experienced things, I've gone on some crazy dates and done some crazy stuff, but I haven't been like you, you're the one, I pick you. I haven't done that yet and no one's done that to me. So anyway, why do you think you're still single? I think I just answered that. Anyway, okay, next question. Next question. Have you ever considered doing any other kind of job? I mean, I feel really happy with what I do and I'm very passionate about it, but I do feel like it always kind of tickles my mind, the thought of wouldn't it be fun if I could design a restaurant? I'm so into aesthetics and like decor of restaurants. So it'd be so fun to one day literally design or have a hand in how they look and the overall aesthetic, like the menu design. Like I really wanna design menus. I think that'd be really fun. I guess that could be considered kind of similar to what I already do in graphic design, but I have this idea of working on menus, like hand lettered menus for weddings. You know, when you see like the quirky lettering and it's all like doodled and drawn, like I would love to do that in the future. A friend of mine's getting married next spring and she wants me to create her menu. So hopefully when I start doing that, I'll get a taste of it and see if I actually want to do it. The world is truly our oyster, everyone. There's so, so much to do. Describe the dating scene in New York City in three words. A train wreck, just kidding. Darn, I'm gonna think of something really good after this. I did not prepare well for this question. Everything I can think of is four words, so I'm going to change this question to be, describe the New York dating scene in four words because everything I can think of is four. Is his light on? Okay, and it's also very New York because I'm talking about a taxi cab, but something that I talk about over on my podcast all the time is the concept of is their light on? I should say their light on because Miranda actually talked about this over on Sex in the City long ago, 25 years ago to be exact, is when Sex in the City first aired. But with the taxi, obviously there's the concept of the light being on or the light being off. When the light is on, that means that they're taking passengers. When the light is off, that means they're already full or they're just not taking anyone anywhere, okay? So with people, with guys I've experienced, sometimes you meet someone and they could be fabulous and great and perfect, but their light isn't on. They are not ready for a relationship and you could be anyone and they still wouldn't be ready, you know? And sometimes they don't even know that yet. Sometimes it takes doing for them to learn that, like, or for meeting you to learn that. And it's not anything personal about you. Like a lot of times it's not you. It really is not you, it is them. And I feel that way too. Like there's been points in my life where I really thought I was ready for something. Like I remember when I first moved to the city, I met this great guy and he treated me so, so well. And I was attracted to him, but I was just kind of in my flirty era and my light just was not on. Even though I think he thought he could convince me to turn my light on, it was off. My light was off. I was not in the mood for that. I really wanted to just, you know, gallivant around and be single, which was great at the time. But I think now my light, my light is on, 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 okay? It is on, but it seems like every person I meet, their light is off. Is their light on? That's it. If each of your fingers could shoot out a drink, what would they be? Honestly, kind of hot takes here. Apple juice. I freaking love apple juice. Always will have a love for it. Extra dirty vodka martini from Dante, this amazing place in the city that makes the best martinis. Or Hillstone, close second. Water, probably, because I need to hydrate. Ice water, tap, <laughs> or still. Probably a spicy margarita, spicy mark, and then maybe just like really, really cold, fresh lemonade. That's my answer. Okay, next question. What is the best piece of advice that you've heard recently? I'm gonna paraphrase this, but I'm gonna put the actual quote on the screen because it's such a powerful quote, but I just, don't remember the exact wording and who, who said it, but I saw this on Instagram and it really, really helped me because I feel like I am one of those people that pushes myself to the point of burnout because I feel like I don't deserve to rest, okay? And I feel like a lot of people feel that way. Like if they feel like they didn't work their best during the day or they didn't work out their best or like something like that, like they didn't do something to the best of their ability, they don't feel like they deserve rest and downtime. Or even if they do, they still feel like 
I feel like all the time that there's still more to be done. So I don't allow myself to rest and get that downtime that I really, really need in order to do my best. So the words of advice kind of are along the lines of don't think so much about have I worked hard enough to deserve the rest? Think about have I rested enough to work hard or work to the best of my ability? Like have I gotten enough rest in order to work, work as best as I can, you know? It's less about like have I deserved the rest because I've worked hard enough, you know? Does that make sense to you and me and everyone? I don't know if it makes sense. When I watch this back, I'll be like, Katie, that was absolute gibberish. But that is the best piece of advice that I've heard recently and something that I'm really striving to listen to because rest is so important. It's not selfish and it is extremely productive. So that is something I'm thinking about. Okay, you guys of course asked me a lot of dating questions. If a guy goes to you, would you ever reach out for closure or simply move on? I would not ask for closure, I would move on. Doesn't matter how far down the road they ghosted me, unless I have a suspicion that they might have like, like harm has come to them. And I feel like I should reach out because they might be in trouble. Like if we had plans and they didn't show up, I think I would probably reach out and be like, hey, is everything okay? Just in case, because like things can happen in New York and you just don't know, like someone could get in trouble or hurt or you know hit by a cab or something. Like it happens every day, okay? So it's good to reach out in those situations like if we're supposed to meet somewhere. But if it's just like we're texting and then all of a sudden he goes radio silent, I'm letting him ghost me. Like he's done, we're done and move on. Like, and don't take it as a reflection of it's your fault at all, okay? All right, and then the last question I'm going to answer, is this current apartment truly your dream apartment? So I think I've referred to it as my dream apartment a few times and everyone's like, is that true? Is that real? It's my dream apartment for 27 year old Katie to answer the question. I think it is so charming. I love how the wood creaks. I love how you can tell it's been lived in and it's in the best part of town in my opinion. So much culture, so much history. I love the ivy that grows outside. Like I love so many parts of it. Granted, there are things like I think about if I moved in with someone else, I probably wanna have two bedrooms just to have a little bit more. Like this is not my end all be all apartment, but it is perfect for 27, 28, 29, however old I'm gonna be when I move out of here, Katie. Like this phase of life, this place is perfect for me and for my needs and I'm so excited to decorate it more. I definitely have a lot to do upstairs still. Like it's honestly such a train wreck up there right now. So I have a lot to do. I have to order a new dresser and things like that, which I intend on bringing you guys along on that journey. But it's a really fun stepping stone and I feel so much more at ease here than I did in my last apartment because honestly, as you guys know, I talked about this, like my apartment was so loud, my last one, that I didn't even feel comfortable filming. Like I didn't even, I just like felt so overwhelmed by the noise and like it really made me so anxious. The out of that apartment just was not right for me in the end. Like at first I was so excited about it. It was beautiful. It was a really great apartment, honestly. And I was so lucky to have gotten it, but the noise, I just realized that's a non-negotiable for me now. Like I need to be in a more like calm place. And this place is so calm. You could hear a freaking pin drop. It is just so perfect for me now. And I know I'm going to do great things here. I just feel it, you know, when you walk in, you're just like, ah, I know good things are gonna happen here. So I hope to stay here for a while. And it is my dream apartment for right now. Like for right now, it, it satisfies my needs. And honestly, I am so lucky to be able to afford to live here right now because in New York, Rent has been just insane. Like finding an apartment is so difficult right now. And so I'm feeling lucky. I'm gonna hunker down, make it my own here, and hopefully not move for a while. Fingers crossed. Anyway guys, so that is it for this video. Quickie little, I don't know how quick this was actually, but it was good to touch base with you guys. A cute little Q&A for you all. Hopefully some of the stuff I talked about resonates with you and was helpful or just good to hear, I don't know. And thank you to Dell for sponsoring this video. Stay tuned for more about my Dell XPS 13 Plus laptop. And until next time, bye.